Good morning, Church. Welcome to Church Online. My name is Frank Heisen, and I am the team leader of the Empower Men's Ministry here at Clayton Church of Christ. During this COVID period, my family and I have found ways to reach out to the wider community. One of the ways is, recently, the Holy Spirit ministered to us to start a worship session and share a short devotion every night during this lockdown stage. We do live worship on Facebook every night of the week, just as a small way of getting the gospel of Jesus out there during this difficult period. So church, I just want to encourage you to pray to God and find ways in which you can reach out and be a blessing to someone during this period of COVID-19. For those of you who are joining us for the first time, a warm welcome to you all. And if you would like to find out more about our church, you can visit our website at claytonchurch.org.au or you can send us an email at hello at claytonchurch.org.au Okay, so it's now time to praise and worship God. So, over to you, worship team. Good morning, church. I hope you're having a nice, easy morning. Hey, we're just going to sing about God's love. And we're just going to boast about Him this morning. Amen. Let me just pray for you and then we just get started. God, wherever we're at this morning, we pray for a new revelation. We pray for a freshness of your spirit over our lives, God. Renew us in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Cheers. 
but the blood of Jesus nothing but the blood of Jesus oh, I've heard a thousand stories of what Wow. 
All right, church, it's now time for some announcements. Life in lockdown. What has everyone been up to during this lockdown in Melbourne? We have been asking different families to share with us how they've been spending their time at home. And it's been encouraging to see what God has been teaching everyone during this time. Why don't you take a look at this video of Ethan and Toby. Hi everyone, I'm Ethan. And I'm Toby. At the start of this year, we had a lot to look forward to. I had a great teacher and all my best friends in my class. I was looking forward to year three camp and going overseas to Japan. I was looking forward to my final year of primary school, ski camp, and being able to learn in the best building of the school. But then the coronavirus struck. Oh, no. And all this was taken away from us. Instead, we were stuck at home, and this is what it made me feel like. We had a choice to make. We could see the situation as a glass half full or a glass half empty. But isn't it just a glass of water? Stay hydrated, kids. So we made the most of it and realized there are still things to enjoy. We can still go skateboarding and play outside. We can still play games with our friends. We can still have fun walking our dog. In fact, some things didn't change at all. Golf is still a tricky game. We still don't catch fish when we go fishing. And my brother is still a crazy clown. What we learned from this situation is that when God closes one door, you can always get out of the window. Just kidding. Things may have changed, but the important things haven't. Our family is still around. Our friends are just a zoo away. We are safe and healthy. And most of all, God still loves us. And the virus won't last forever, or will it? Well done, Ethan and Toby. If you and your families would like to share what you have been up to and what God has been teaching you during this life in lockdown, we would love to see videos of your families too. Send us an email at stories at claytonchurch.org.au and we can give you some questions to answer in your video. Child Dedication Father's Day is two weeks away and it's our church tradition to hold baby and child dedications during this special day. So if you would like to take this opportunity to dedicate your child and make a commitment to raise them up in the ways of God, please get in touch with us at hello at clintonchurch.org.au and we'll be able to walk you through the next steps. Sow a Seed Since launching a Sow a Seed initiative at the beginning of July, we've raised over $12,000 and we want to say a huge thank you to all our donors who are investing in this fund to help those who have been impacted by COVID-19. Because of your generosity, we are now in a position to bless people. So if you know of someone who could use this help, please encourage them to apply or apply on their behalf. Simply jump on to our website at clintonchurch.org.au to find out more. Don't forget to give this stream a like so more people can see our church services and hear the good news of Jesus. And if you have any other questions or would like to connect with us, send us an email at hello at claytonchurch.org.au or call us on 0395-442155. We have now come to a time of tithes and offerings and honoring God with our finances. I would like to read from Mark chapter 12, verse 41 to 44, where it says, Jesus sat down near the collection box in the temple and watched as the crowds dropped in their money. Many rich people put in large amounts. Then a poor widow came and dropped in two small coins. Jesus called his disciples to him and said, 
I tell you the truth. This poor widow has given more than all the others who are making contributions. For they gave a tiny part of their surplus. But she, poor as she is, has given everything she had to live on. Dear Church, I would like to share my thoughts on this particular scripture. Tithing is an act of faith that helps us to know our priorities straight. It reminds us that we don't own anything in this life. God is in control and we are only managers of what He has given us. The value of a gift is not determined by its amount, but by the spirit in which it is given. God sees the attitude of our heart in the way we think, tithe. It is an act of worship to Almighty God, a gift given grudgingly or for recognition loses its value. When we give, remember gifts of any size are pleasing to God when they are given out of gratitude and a spirit of generosity. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for every blessing you have bestowed upon us. Lord, this morning I would like to pray for each and every person that is offering up their tithes to you, Lord. We just pray a blessing upon them and upon their families. And Lord, we just pray that this offering, it will be a sweet smelling sacrifice to you, pleasing and acceptable to you, my God, and that this offering will be used for your greater glory in this life. In Jesus' name, Amen. You can give through Tidely by downloading the app on your device or through online banking using the details on the screen now. To give towards Sow a Seed Fund, simply select Sow a Seed Campaign on Tidely or giving towards the account on the screen and refer referencing Sow a Seed in the description. For more information about Sow a Seed, visit our website at claytonchurch.org.au. So while we give the parents a bit of a time to set up their kids for Kids Church, why don't you say hello to one another on the YouTube chat? Grab a warm drink, get comfortable, and we'll see you back in a few minutes, ready for Pastor Chi to wrap up the relationship series for us with the topic of boundaries. Deeper, still into love. Hi Church, welcome to Church Online. Well, before I bring the Word of God to you, I've got an exciting announcement for next week. I don't know how some of you guys are tracking along through this stage four restrictions, but as a team, we're just mindful that some of us might be finding it hard in our area of mental health as we walk through in lockdown and some of us in isolation. So what we've done is we've actually asked Dr. Danny Chia 
to come speak to us about mental health during a time of crisis. So Dr. Danny is a child and adolescent psychiatrist. He's the head of clinical services at Alfred Hospital for the child and youth mental health services. And so he's gonna come and speak to us next week uh, on the Sunday service about mental health in a time of crisis. And then after that, we're gonna have a webinar from 11.15 to 12.30. And he's gonna be speaking briefly about the practicalities of building mental resilience and mental health, especially for healthcare workers, as well as parents and youth. And so there'll be a bit of a short presentation, but largely a big chunk of Q&A. Uh, so if you wanna be part of that, you gotta register online. So just go to our website and check that out. And then at 2 p.m. in our Chinese Church GN, uh, YouTube channel, he's gonna be speaking about building resilient families, especially in the areas of mental health. And so uh, that, that will be translated into Chinese, but he'll be speaking in English, so you should be able to uh, tune in on that as well. So well, why don't we get straight into it? We've been, today we're gonna finish off the series on relationships where it's about, it's not you, it's me. So we've spoken about how our faith, the Christian faith and how Jesus transforms the way we relate to one another and the way we become self-aware and the way we communicate and the way we resolve conflict. And for today, we're gonna to speak about boundaries because healthy relationships needs healthy boundaries. So let's get straight into the Word of God. We're going to read from Genesis chapter 2, verse 15 to 27, and this is the New Living Translation. It says this, The Lord God placed the man in the garden of Eden to tend and watch over it. But the Lord God warned him, You may eat the fruit of every tree in the garden, except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you eat its fruit, you are sure to die. And this is the word of the Lord. Now, before I get into it, um, this I just want to reference Henry Cloud. He wrote a book on boundaries, and we're going to use some of his stuff from here. But really, it's a massive topic, and we're not going to be able to cover everything. So I would recommend you to even check out that book. That would be super helpful. But why don't I pray? Uh, dear Lord God, we just really want to thank you for your word. I really believe that you're going to speak a word in season to be able to bring life to people in the area of relationships, that you'll be able to give that aha moment for them as if you were encountering them and speaking to them to the very thing it is that they're struggling right now in their area of relationships. So Spirit of God, bring life to your word today in the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, have you ever been in a situation where you've said yes to something when you should have said no? I'm sure it happens to all of us to varying degrees. Uh, I remember the most memorable time was actually eight years ago when my oldest son Judah was born. He was born in Monash Hospital and it was 3 a.m. in the morning. And you know, Crazy Chi decided to book in a lunchtime appointment with the president of a theological college and here he was on the day his son was born his first child was born here he was having lunch yum cha at Burwood with uh, the, the leader of that organization crazy huh I said yes to that when I should have said no and worse still a few days later it was my friend's wedding and and I felt obliged I felt I couldn't say no and 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 so Behold, you know, I said yes to that instead of saying no. And a few days later, here I am alone by myself in, in, in the wedding reception and leaving my wife, my poor wife, Wei, my late wife, Wei, and with my son Judah, my newborn son. And uh, I took some paternal leave for a few weeks. And then after that, the crazy chaos came back again. And I felt all these obligations, these meetings. And, and I found myself actually saying goodbye to Judah and, and my wife, Wei, two times a night, a day. And it's just like crazy, one in the morning and one at night. And I look back in hindsight, I'm just going, what was I doing? Why was I saying yes to those things when I should be saying no? But I really recall at that moment, I felt like I had no options. I felt like, don't you understand the level of responsibility that I have? Don't you understand that, you know, I don't want to disappoint people. You know, I, I, I feel so unloving to say no. I feel so guilty. I feel so obliged. And, 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 and until I remember quite a, probably about one year later, I remember listening to this sermon that was talking about scheduling. And he was talking about how you are ridiculously in charge of your schedule. Now, when I heard that, it just resonated in my heart and brought conviction because it made me aware that 
I am. <laughs> like, it's my responsibility. I can actually say yes and no to what goes into my schedule. And I reflected on that moment and I realized back then what I thought was everyone's demands and issues and I, I had no control over it. I had, but really at the end of the day, the problem wasn't with you. The problem was actually with me. That I didn't understand the place of boundaries and the importance of placing loving boundaries in order to foster healthy relationships. I'm sure some of you can resonate with that with me, where you've, there have been times when you've said yes when you should have said no. It might have been a friend who says, can I borrow your car when you actually need it? And you should have said no, but instead you find yourself saying yes. It might have been someone, in, you're in a relationship with a guy and he's showing you some physical disrespect. And you know what, you don't like it, but you're afraid to say no because you're afraid that your boyfriend's gonna get angry and is gonna leave you. And so you said yes when you should have said no. What about a friend who's always chronically late? They're late all the time, 20 minutes, half an hour, making you wait, disrespecting you and your time. And, and, and every single time he goes, I'm sorry, you're, I'm late, I'm sorry, I'm late. And you, you want to say something, because he, 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 but yet you find yourself, you know, saying, yes, it's okay, don't worry about it. When you really should have said no, that is not okay. What about some of you, you might have friends yelling at you, verbally abusing you and instead of walking away and say I'm not going to tolerate this instead you find yourself saying yes by your silence and just staying there being verbally abused by someone what about this for parents right you're trying to set a bedtime schedule for your three-year-old child and and they're crying when they go on a bed and and you're panicking on the inside you're thinking oh am I abandoning my kid they need me I'm not being there for them and so you cave in and instead of setting a bedtime routine you break it and and you're, you're there at their every whim I'm sure all of us have said yes when we should have said no and really this is what this whole discussion is about that healthy relationships need loving boundaries and you know one of the interesting things is that God gives us boundaries you know in the beginning in the, what we've just read in the beginning in Genesis when God created mankind he says I've given you responsibility I've given you responsibility to steward and to care and to work the ground and to work the earth but yet he says I give you everything and he places a boundary he says except to not eat from the fruit of the tree of good and evil and yet here he places this boundary and here God was already setting it up he's saying I've given you the freedom to choose but you have to choose you have the freedom to choose to live within the boundaries or you can choose to live outside the boundaries you can live inside God's boundaries and that will bring blessing or you can choose to live outside God's boundaries and it can bring destruction and death and that's what happened Adam and Eve had one boundary. Don't eat from the free fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And God gave them the freedom to choose to remain within His boundary, but they chose to cross the boundary and sin. And their response resulted in a fractured relationship with God and also with one another. And when God began to question them, did you do this? Then all of a sudden you see irresponsibility. They didn't take responsibility. Eve was like, the Satan did it. Adam was like, God, you did it. You made this woman. And, and here we see the dysfunction in relationships beginning to happen because they cross the boundary that God has set. You know, boundaries limit destructive behaviors. And that is why God and even society has laws with consequences so that those who overstep those boundaries will have to deal with consequences. So what is a boundary? Well, here I am in my very backyard, and this is my back fence. And as most of you know, fences act like boundaries. They're property lines that define what is my property and what is my neighbor's property. Whatever is on this side of the fence actually belongs to me. I'm responsible and in control about what happens on this side of my property. I can plant trees that I want. I can chop down the trees that I want. I can even litter on this property. I can even put pavement on this property. I can do what I want because this is my property. On the other hand, on the other side of this fence, it's my neighbor's property. 
and I have no control over it, I have no responsibility over it, and boundary lines are property lines that clearly define what is my property versus what is yours. And as you know, the saying goes, good fences makes good neighbors, because it clearly brings this clarity about who's responsible for what and who's in control of what. In the meantime, in the same way in relationships, we have boundaries. And boundaries are like relational property lines. While you may not be able to feel and touch it, nonetheless, it's actually there and it's invisible. And in any relationship, there is a me and then there is a you. You know, when God calls us to love one another, for me to say, I love you, there is an I in a relationship and there is a you, and they're two different people that makes a relationship. And boundaries are relational property lines that clearly define what is me versus what is you. It helps define where you end and where I begin. And that I am not you and you are not me. This is my life and that is your life. And this is super helpful because it also clearly defines what I'm responsible for and versus what you are responsible for. Anything on this side of the fence in my life, I'm responsible for that. But anything on the other side in your life, I am not responsible for that. Do you know that on this side of the fence, sometimes when, have you ever had your neighbors have overgrown trees? You know, whenever anything that's on this side, you and I actually have the ability to just chop those trees down, the branches, because it's on our side. We have responsibility over it. However, anything on the other side, once it crosses this property line, do you know it's actually illegal for us to actually chop the tree down on their side of the property because we are not responsible for it. They are. And in the same way, that happens in relationships. And the third thing that property lines does, it clearly defines what I'm in control of versus what's in your control. And so often, I can't control you. I can't control your emotions. I can't control how you feel, what you think, what you decide, how you react. But I can be in control over my feelings, my thoughts, my reactions, and my attitudes. But so often times, and that's empowering because sometimes people chuck stuff over into your side of the fence. But you know what? When you realize that you're in control, you get to kick things out. You get to kick the bad out and allow the good in. Hey, Judah. Hey, Judah. This is your rubbish, man. You take your rubbish. Thanks. So property lines, the the boundaries, the relational property lines, they help define what is me versus you, helps clarify what I'm responsible for versus what you're responsible for, and it helps clarify what I'm in control of versus what you're in control. It's freezing. Let's get going. Hey, Judah, let's go. So we're gonna talk about three groups of people in the way they often deal with boundaries. You might find yourself to be oftentimes one of them or even a mix of them. And so these are the three categories that I've kind of put them in. Uh, The first is an unhealthy giver, the second is an unhealthy protector, and the third is an unhealthy taker. So what's an unhealthy giver? They're the kinds of people who give and give with no boundaries. I have a tendency to be like this, you know, um, where you have this, um, a little bit like my story at the beginning, you know, you can't seem to say no. You have a tendency to say yes to everything. You can be an unhealthy giver if you find yourself in patterns of burnout and poor self-care because you've overcommitted and overextended yourself. You can be an unhealthy giver if you have a tendency to avoid speaking the truth in love in your relationships and it has become stressful and anxious in those relationships for you. You can be an unhealthy giver if you have a tendency to continuously rescue people from the consequences of their own choices and in so doing, enabling irresponsible behavior. You can be an unhealthy giver if you have a tendency to always want to please other people. It's like you're always walking on eggshells, afraid of upsetting people, or you have a tendency to over-accommodate rather than being assertive that you have needs also in those relationships. Are you an unhealthy giver? People who give and give with no loving boundaries. You know, there are a lot of reasons why we don't put boundaries. Um, it's be- and, and what I want to speak to is because oftentimes we feel that it's unloving 
it can feel selfish, it can be unloving to say no. And especially as Christians, when God calls us to lay down our life and to love unconditionally, it feels so selfish to say no. But yet, when we look at Jesus in the Gospels, this Jesus who laid down His life for us, while He was living on this earth, He had no problems setting boundaries and saying no. Jesus would set boundaries for personal self-care. We see in Mark chapter 6, verse 30-32, it says this, The apostles returned to Jesus from their ministry tour and told Him all they had done and taught. Then Jesus said, Let's go off by ourselves to a quiet place and rest a while. He said this because there were so many people coming and going that Jesus and His apostles didn't even have time to eat. So they left by boat for a quiet place where they could be alone. And here there were people, there were demands, but yet Jesus had this ability to go, no. He had the ability to set boundaries for personal self-care. In Luke chapter 5, verse 15, 16, it says, But despite Jesus' instructions, the report of His power spread even faster, and vast crowds came to hear Him preach and to be healed of their diseases. But Jesus often withdrew to the wilderness for prayer. And we see Jesus able to set boundaries for personal self-care. Jesus had no problem saying no to inappropriate behavior. In Ma- Ma- Luke chapter 4, verse 28 to 30, there was a, t- a time when the crowd was going to f- abuse him and physically throw him off the cliff because he had claimed to be the Messiah. But Jesus says, get away from me. And he just pushed his way through the crowd, you know, and refused to be thrown off the cliff. I think that would be the case for anyone, really. Um, but you know what? Jesus had no problem saying no to inappropriate behavior. Uh, Jesus had no problems to speak truth in love to those who were doing wrong. You know, those people, th- those um, money changers in the temple, he would go through with a whip, turn the tables over, and says, how dare you turn God's house into a marketplace? Jesus had no problem saying no. In fact, Jesus calls this in Matthew 5.37 saying this, simply let your yes be a yes and your no be a no. But yet, how often times when we've said no, we said yes, we really meant no. Now, for an unhealthy giver, a healthy boundary is for us to understand this that boundaries are not selfish. Boundaries help us distinguish our own property line so that we can take care of ourselves and be good stewards of who we are. Boundaries helps us be the best us so that we can then have the capacity to serve and love those around us. A no for us can prevent burnout. No is not just a dirty word and it's not necessarily related to how much you love someone. No is sometimes important because it helps us protect and love the people who are important in our lives. If being too social or working too hard meant that you haven't seen your kids in weeks, saying no means you can say yes to them. And you know what, ultimately as well, saying no helps us realize we are not Jesus. There can only be one. And if we are not there, Jesus is there. Now the second group of people is what I call unhealthy protectors. These are people who use boundaries as walls. You see, when I'm talking about boundaries, I'm not talking about protecting yourself to the point that you can't see other people's needs, you can't serve other people. No, no, but that's what unhealthy protectors do. They have used their boundaries and they have become walls, impenetrable walls. Walls that stop them from serving other people. Walls that stop them from hearing the needs of other people. Walls that also stop us from receiving love from other people. How do you know your boundaries have become walls? When the purpose of your boundaries is ultimately to serve yourself. These kind of people need walls so that they don't get inconvenience. They don't get discomforted. They don't feel hurt, disappointed, or anxious. 
Have you ever known someone who's really rigid? The discipline, but super rigid, almost to the point that they can't bend and flex to the needs of those around them. Where it's like, oh, everyone has to work around their schedule, around their timeline, around their boundaries. Those are unhealthy protectors, where their boundaries have become walls. But yet in Galatians chapter 6, verse 2 to 5, in the New Living Translation, this is what it says. Share each other's burdens. And in this way, obey the law of Christ. If you think you're too important to help someone, you are only fooling yourself. You are not that important. And here, Paul is encouraging us that we don't just have a responsibility to look after ourselves and for ourselves, but we have a responsibility to one another to carry each other's burdens, to help someone who has a burden that's too heavy to bear, where they don't have enough strength, they don't have enough resources or knowledge to carry that load. The word burden in the Greek means excessive burden, like big boulders, and they need help to carry. And here Paul encourages us as Christians, reminds us to say, you don't just have a responsibility for yourself, you have a responsibility to other people. And for us as unhealthy protectors, we have healthy boundaries when we understand this, that the purpose of boundaries is to help me serve my relationships better. I am not just responsible for me, I am responsible to love others. And I want to encourage you, if you're an unhealthy protector, you got to understand that your no is not just a boundary, it's about self-protection. That your no can close opportunities for what God can do in the, your life and what God, how God can use you to serve other people around you. And sometimes the Spirit of God might be prompting you, but in the name of saying it's a boundary that's healthy, really it has become a wall and you're grieving and you can potentially grieve and quench the Holy Spirit from moving in your life to see incredible breakthroughs in your life and through your life. God has called you to not just be an unhealthy protector. Tear down those walls and let your boundaries set you up so that you can serve other people in the way that Jesus calls you to. The last group of people is what I call unhealthy takers. These are people who take from others by crossing their boundaries. Have you ever had someone say to this to you? He goes, you made me feel this way. I feel this way. I feel angry because of what you did. I wouldn't think this way if you never did that. Have you ever had someone say that to you? That's someone who I will call an unhealthy taker. They're the people who say this, who cross boundaries. They cross boundaries because they say, you are responsible for me and how I react. You need to change for me to not feel and behave this way. Now, I came across a cartoon many years ago. It was quite a confronting cartoon, actually. It was a cartoon about a bank teller, and the bank had closed, and the teller was doing their job and closing the day. And, and there was a guy who was running in really late because he was running late on time. And he wanted to be served, but the till had closed. And he got really, really angry. And you could see he's really mad and blaming the other person, blaming the teller. But the scene was that the teller was just indifferent. Not, not shaken, not reactive. And on the sign on the table, and there was this confronting statement that said, your disorganization is not my emergency. <laughs> you see, that person has set up a boundary to an unhealthy taker. You see, this guy is saying, hey, you're responsible. Why are you not serving me? Well, you know, you're the one that's making me late. But the guy is going, dude, let's be clear about this. I'm not responsible for you. You are responsible for you. You, are resp you got to be responsible for your own disorganization. That's not my responsibility. In fact, it's not my emergency. 
and then he's just calling it for what it is but yet here in Galatians 6 2 to 5 this is what Paul is doing in the ESV version it says this bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ for if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing he deceives himself but let each one test his own work and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone and not in his neighbor for each will have to bear his own load and here you see this contrast on one hand before you're saying if you're carrying this boulder that you can't carry yourself we have a responsibility to help one another but on the other hand it talks about that you have your own responsibility to carry your own load and the word load here means cargo the burden of daily toil like a backpack that you got to carry for your own and the problem oftentimes happens when people act like their backpacks are like burdens and expect everyone else to be responsible for it but yet here Paul says you got to be responsible for your own load you know in 2 Thessalonians 3 10 it says this if one will not work don't let him eat either and here the Bible is saying hey you got to carry your own load you're made to work work if you can work and don't expect everyone else to feed you carry your own load now when it talks about load it gives this picture of a backpack and whatever is in this backpack is your own and oftentimes we got to realize in this backpack what belongs to us and we are responsible for and no one else is is our choices no one else is responsible for that but how often have I said it and have I heard other people said that I would not have made this decision if you didn't do that again not taking responsibility not carrying your own load and in so doing crossing over boundaries saying to other people you are responsible for me when the truth is no 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 I am responsible for me what about my consequences right we get upset and we don't like the, the consequences from our actions what about our time right I am responsible for my time right and and I, I am just like the cartoon is like he's saying you're responsible for my time no 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 you're gonna be responsible for your disorganization and your poor time management it cannot be my emergency or well, what about this my feelings you know as a father there have been so many times where I had to discipline my children and, uh, and I, I must say there have been times where I've just been super duper angry and I've been put in consequences and, and to my own you know, dismay there have been times where I've spoken words over them that I wish I never said I'd be like I'd be things like I'd be saying you know what I wouldn't be angry if you only listened yeah I'd be saying things like that you know and, and I'm not particularly proud of it but in those moments it reminds me that I'm that unhealthy taker I'm saying hey to my eight-year-old and five-year-old kid you're responsible for me and how I react and here I am saying that you need to change so that I won't feel and behave this way and then when it comes close to the night the Spirit of God will be prompting me in my conscience into saying Chi the consequence was right but your words they weren't right they're not responsible who's the kid here them you and it's like you need to take responsibility because for your own anger for your own frustration because doesn't Jesus be like that didn't it say that Jesus who was reviled never reviled in return Jesus was spat on never spat back Jesus was slapped didn't slap back you got to take responsibility for you and in those moments at night when we're praying and we, every night we pray we have to say two things we thank Jesus for one thing we need to say sorry to Jesus for and of course for me I'll be happy to go in those moments I'm sorry Jesus for being so angry at them and for saying those things to them and I have to apologize to Judah and Micah in those moments you see a healthy boundary especially for those who are unhealthy takers 
is to understand that boundaries define what I am responsible for. And I respect other people's boundaries when I begin to take responsibility for me. For me. I think if my kids were a little bit older and they were 21 years old or something and I just went crazy like the times, the times I do, I think for them to exercise healthy boundaries is to say, you know what, Dad, I don't have to be here for you to be this rude to me. When you've calmed down and you're ready to talk to me and to talk about the situation in a way that's respectful, then I'm willing to talk to you. And he walks away. Now, I think as an Asian parent, I would feel really disrespected out of that. But you know what? That is the right behavior. Because he's put up a boundary and said, no, that is inappropriate and you need to take responsibility for that. And I don't have to be here to cop it from you. I can wait until you calm down and take responsibility for you. And then I can come back and we can re-engage so that this relationship can continually be healthy now and into the future. If you're an unhealthy taker, you need to learn to respect what no means when people say no. If you're a healthy taker, you need to realize to not take advantage of people who may not be clear on saying no, but they really mean it, and for you to be able to hear it. As we finish, let's look to Jesus Christ, who was not a healthy giver. He was able to give with boundaries, with loving boundaries, so that throughout his whole ministry, in the midst of all the demands, he never burnt out, but was able to pour out his life to other people. Do not be an unhealthy protector, but instead look at Jesus, who did not put walls around himself, but he set himself out so that he could actually serve one another and to serve us, because he says, I did not come to be served, but to serve. And if you're an unhealthy taker, look at Jesus because He did not come to take and cross our boundaries. In fact, He laid down His life for us, took on our sins, and now opens the door for us to be forgiven, to be accepted, and to be in relationship with God. And my call for you today is that will you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? Will you see how He can begin to transform your relationships and to be able to be in relationship with Him? Let me just pray. Lord God, we just want to thank You for Your Word. And we just pray that You will give people insight into their relational world. Help them to set godly, biblical, healthy boundaries so that we can be like You. Be a disciple who represents Jesus to everyone everywhere with everything. That we can be sustainable, we can be healthy, so that we can best serve the people around us and lay our life down ultimately at the end of the day the way you did in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.
set my feet upon the rock And now I know Thank you, Pastor Chi, for that message and challenging us with the idea of setting healthy boundaries in our relationships. Well, thank you all for joining us today. And if you are new and want to connect with us, have someone to pray with you or answer any questions you may have, please don't hesitate to email us at hello at or call us on 0395. 442155 because we would love to hear from you and connect with you. Have a good week church and we'll see you again next week. Bye.